guys, this is Valesa from Alive Refurbish, and in this week's video, we're going to be giving this end table a makeover. And even though it is a smaller project, it requires several steps, including making your own glaze. Yes, did you know that you can use clear glaze to make whatever glaze color you want? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that, so stay tuned. This table has definitely seen better days. Today we're gonna give it a coastal slash weather look and we're gonna start by stripping the existing finish. We're gonna be doing that by applying this stripping gel. Don't forget to protect yourself from any harsh chemicals and give your piece just a quick wipe before you start applying the chemical stripper. Applying a generous amount of this product will prevent it from drying out before it does what it's supposed to do. Also make sure to have a container ready so that all of the finish that you're removing can be disposed in there. Do you notice that crackling or separating of the previous finish? That means that the chemical stripper is doing its job, so this is ready to be scraped off. Since the chemical stripper softens the wood, I recommend that you use a plastic spatula to scrape the old finish off instead of a metal one. This will prevent the wood from getting any scratches. Now that we have removed most of the old finish, we're gonna be cleaning the rest of the gooiness that's left with these green MB Orderless Mineral Spirits and extra fine steel wool. It's almost like you're scrubbing whatever finish is left and it's important that you follow the wood grain when you do this. The same principle applies for a lot of the things that I'm gonna be doing today like color washing and wiping finishes. I'm gonna make sure that I follow the wood grain. You can tell the top of this table has grains that go in all kinds of different directions. So following the grains is just gonna be an important part of the entire process today. Let's wipe off any of the mineral spirits that's left and we're gonna let this table sit overnight to dry. Let's sand this table with a very fine sanding paper following the principle that I talked to you about earlier, which is following the wood grain. The reason for sanding is that there are still some residue left from the previous finish even after we gave this piece a good scrub with mineral spirits so I want to make sure to get all that off before I start applying my color wash. It is time to clean all the dust off with a damp rag and then I'm going to be priming this piece to encapsulate all the tannins from this wood and preventing them from filtering through my new finish and making it patchy looking. I applied two coats of this clear shellac and a few minutes later I can sand it to make sure that my paint has something to hang on to. And now I'm giving everything a final wipe and I can start applying my color wash. I'm diluting Algonquin. This color is from Fusion Mineral Paint with water and this is gonna create a stained look. I'm gonna be working by sections. So first I apply this watery mix on half of the table and I have some wet rags ready to wipe this off. To darken my piece just a bit more, I apply a second coat of the color wash and wait an hour between the first coat and the second. Mm -hmm. 
let's create a unique glaze color we're going to be doing this by using clear glaze from fusion and a couple of their paint colors make sure you have a bunch of wet rags ready a brush some tape and a couple measuring spoons since the wood grain is going in all kinds of different directions i want to be mindful in the way that i apply the product this is why i tape everything first we're gonna mix four parts of the clear glaze from fusion with one part of paint whatever color you choose i am mixing two different colors to create this one specific color that my customer wanted me to replicate for this first part you're gonna see me applying a very light coat of the glaze i just made and I'm gonna be using a wet rag to distribute the product evenly throughout the surface. On this last section, you're gonna see me use a bristle brush to apply the glaze. And I like the way this application looks, so just FYI. But once this base is completely distributed, I'm gonna be applying a second coat of the same glaze, but this time I'm not really gonna wipe it off. I want some of that streakiness to come through because this is gonna help me create some dimension and some texture on my piece. As you can tell, I'm also working by sections here. Once again, applying my glaze, distributing it with my wet rag, applying my second coat by just feathering and barely touching my piece with the tips of my bristle brush and some of that glaze. This technique is also known as a dry brush technique, which you are gonna see me use it throughout my videos. Check out here how I offload some of that extra glaze on that wet rag and then whatever's left on the tips of my brush, I start feathering on my table. That texture is pretty cool looking. One of the things that I like about Fusion Glaze is that you have a pretty good amount of time to play with it before it starts drying out. But this also means that it takes longer to dry. After I am done applying this technique, I am going to wait 24 hours before I move on to the next step. Right now this table is looking lighter than I want it to, so I am going to be darkening this finish by using Fusion Antiquing Glaze. For this step, just have a few wet rags ready and a bristle brush. I find that this product is more translucent than others, so how you apply it is not as important. It's more about how you wipe it off, and we're going to continue to follow the same principle. Follow the wood grains. To add more of an H look to my table, I am going to be darkening all the edges using this chocolate color from Fusion. Pretty similar technique here, just dip the tips of your bristles off load and then apply the little bit that's left, barely touching every edge.
And now that I darken all the edges, the rest of my table is still looking too light to me. So, I think I have a solution for it. I am going to be applying another color wash and this time it's going to be a dark gray. For this color wash, I'm using the color soapstone from Fusion again. If I were to do this again, hint hint, I would be applying this gray color wash over the Algonquin color wash. Because as I apply this darker gray, some of the texture got lost and also my edges didn't pop as they did before. So I found myself having to go back, as you see me here, retouching some of the dry brushing and also retouching the edges with the dark chocolate. I am trying to recreate a sample board that was given to me by one of my customers. And in that sample, some of the metallics came through a little more than my table was showing. So I went back and applied another round of a dry brush technique using this champagne metallic color from Fusion. Let's protect my table so that it withstands the test of time by using this high performance top coat in the flat finish from General Finishes. I applied three coats to make sure that this table is fully protected. And here is the final look. This is where every step comes together and I am digging this texture and dimension so much. As always, I hope that you guys enjoy it. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe and to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out next time I post a video. Don't forget that just like there is hope for these pieces of furniture, it doesn't matter how tough things get, there's always hope for you. Until next time.